All right, our third Democratic candidate is Christopher Malin, and uh, Chris is here, come up on the other side. Come up around this way, Chris. And uh, you know, he will be the third Democratic candidate, and then we'll go to our two Republican candidates, okay? And by the way, there is a description on the back of your agenda that says what the duties of a county commissioner are. And this is part of our education series. Every one of these events we've had, we've had a little description of what it, the position does. So it's something that you can kind of look at before you uh, go and speak with them after the break. Okay, Chris? Thanks, Tom. Good to see you. I'm Chris Mallon, and I'm a candidate for county commissioner. Uh, to those of you who heard me speak here 20 months ago, thanks for coming back. My, uh, my background is still pretty much the same. I still attend Mass most Sundays at the church I was baptized in 61 years ago. I still drive a Pontiac. I still own a Winchester Model 94 3030. None of that has much to do with county commissioner, but I do want to remind you that Democratic candidates do go to church, drive American cars, and own sport and firearms. I still own a a rattlesnake flag that I bought 35 years ago at Fort Ticonderoga. I was born about 30 miles up Route 14 from here in Marymount Hospital, and I've lived within 30 miles of this place my whole life. I have two daughters and a son. All of them have graduated from universities in Ohio. All of them have jobs. All of them have moved somewhere else to get those jobs. Two of them are married. Don't let the uh, candidate costume fool you. Charlene told me this video was going to go online, so I had to dress up. But I am a, a working class Democrat from down the road. While I was in college, I worked two uh, vacations at a chemical plant on the Cuyahoga River. And I was a member of the International Chemical Workers Union Local 10. While I was in law school at uh, Case Western Reserve University, I worked at the Ford Walton Hill stamping plant as a member of Local 420, and I was an ATPL for a few months. It gave me a lot of encouragement to study real hard at school, so I didn't have to do that for my whole life. In 1974, I started practicing law. One of the lawsuits that I filed that first year was a case in municipal court in Ravenna. And I have appeared in courts in 23 counties and four Court of Appeals districts across Ohio for these past 38 years. I have made my living representing individuals and families and small businesses. I have never been a government lawyer. The only time I've been on a public payroll since I finished law school was when I was an elected member of city council over 25 years ago. And at the time, that paid $75 a month. So I do not have a long history of working for the taxpayers. I've been working for individuals and businesses and trying to keep things functioning out here so those of us can pay taxes can continue to do that and keep the taxpayer payrolls going. I understand that economics have been tough since 2007 because when my clients get laid off or their businesses downsize, then the attorney fees get paid in very small payments over a very long time and I downsize. I have been legal counsel to small businesses in Portage County. Some of you may remember in the 1990s before Roadrunner and SBC Global, there was a company called config.com that brought the internet to Portage County and uh, config.com was one of my clients. I've represented a construction company in Streetsboro, a restaurant in Ravenna, other small shops around the county. Uh, there is a, a lengthy description of the kinds of cases that I've represented folks on uh, during my attorney career on my uh, candidate website, malin2012.com. Now to the politics. I'm still a Democrat. And one of the things that that means is I believe that government can do good if it's done right. I believe that each American should pay a fair share of taxes and each elected official should pick, use those taxes carefully for the purpose that they're intended. 
So to the county commissioners. Last week, the commissioners passed the reorganization plan on a two to one vote with Commissioner Frederick voting against. Every other county elected official signed a letter objecting to that plan. So I believe that that reorganization has to be examined carefully in light of those objections. Nobody knows better than me that if the county auditor objects to something, it ain't going nowhere. There is uh, probably a way to reorganize county administration to make delivery of services to county residents more efficient. I don't know right now what that way is, but I am certainly willing to work with the other county officials to try to find that way. The structure of county government was designed sometime before 1900 to serve a county of 30,000 residents. Uh, as of the 2010 census, we have 161,000 residents. Other counties have adopted charters that combined offices and reduced expenses. That's an issue that the voters can decide, but that is something that you may want to consider if you want to make your county government more efficient. But under state law, that must be done by vote of the people who live in the county, and that's not anything that the commissioners can do anything about. One of the things the commissioners can do something about is the county will be receiving some capital funds from the sale of the nursing home and uh, possibly from the sale of the hospital. Now, capital funds cannot be used for operating expenses, but they can be used for improving and upgrading the county's other facilities to make future operations less expensive and more efficient. County facilities should be inventoried for energy conservation. Where possible, I would support on-site solar and wind energy generation to, uh, to reduce future expenses and to keep the county services functioning in the event of another widespread grid blackout like we had in August of 2003. Sometimes folks make fun of uh, solar panels, sometimes folks make fun of windmills, but there are private uh, owners in Portage County who have put up wind generators they work, they produce enough electricity to run their, their farm operation with, and I think that we need to investigate that possibility here with the county government, especially if we're gonna have an input of capital funds from sale of these other assets, the nursing home and possibly the hospital. That money should be invested in capital improvements that will make the future operation of the county less expensive. If we can generate our own electricity, we should do that. Along that line, I propose that future bid specifications to replace county vehicles include alternate specs for powertrains fueled by natural gas rather than gasoline. Ford and GM uh, both produce natural gas powered vehicles since last year. And since Portage County is becoming the world's source for natural gas, we should use some of it here rather than shipping it all to China. My most important concern is managing the industrialization of the county due to natural gas drilling and distribution and waste disposal. Uh, Ms. Ms. Chandler uh, reminded you that the state uh, does not let local governments regulate gas drilling to prevent damages. So that means we are left with preparing to repair those industrial damages after they occur. Now, here's possibly where my experience with other counties may come in handy. In Ottawa County, they have the davis Besley nuclear power plant and my understanding from my conversations with Ottawa County officials is that almost all of Ottawa County's emergency response budget is paid for by Ohio Edison because the folks at the nuke plant know that if they have a problem, they're gonna need folks from Ottawa County to come and help them out. They wanna make sure that those folks are trained and they've got the equipment. So my proposal is that Portage County negotiate with the gas drillers 
to pay for emergency response training, emergency response equipment, air and water testing, health programs for children, and medical burn and poison facilities. We in Portage County, and if I'm elected, we in Portage County government, will have to provide the responses when there are fires or explosions or leaks or spills, but I would like them to pay for it. I believe in the free enterprise system. I believe that free enterprise means that the company that makes the product has to pay the cost of making the product. The folks that drill our gas to sell to China should pay for the cost to repair the damage that drilling does to our land and our water and our air and our health. We in Portage County should not subsidize that damage repair with our tax dollars. The market price of natural gas is low. The reason that price is low is that we, the taxpayers, have to pay for the cleanup. I want the drillers to pay for the restoration of our good water, our good land, our good air, and our good health, all of which they have put at risk by industrializing our county. So I'll be happy to talk about all of this with uh, any of you who care to chat after the speeches are over with. I, uh, I do have a favor to ask, and it, the favor is not vote for me, because I expect you're going to make your own decision on that. But the favor is about this organization and that rattlesnake flag that you sometimes use as your symbol. I really like that flag, and as I said, I got one years and years ago. It means that Americans have a right to disagree. I'm asking you to show that in Ohio, we respect America, we, expect, we respect the right to disagree, and we respect each other. Tonight's meeting is a, a proud example that in this county, we are willing to listen to each other on the off chance that we might find something that we agree about. The favor that I ask is that you continue to listen that you continue to let others speak, and that you continue to think. Times are hard. There are no easy answers. Americans need to listen to lots of different ideas to try to get us back to good times, even from Democrats. The favor I'm asking is don't let your movement get hijacked. Show respect for the American tradition. Do your movement proud. Thank you.